Okay, hello YouTube. Today we're going to do... I wanted to do another plotting video, but instead of LaTeX or Matplotlib or anything like that, instead I was going to do Python to write plots in, in, in Excel because a lot of the times if you're just trying to make something quick for the same day or you working with folks who where it would help if they could actually see like where the data is coming from um, and a lot of people use Excel um, so you can't necessarily just send your script file to someone or send like an HTML link that has you know your figures embedded so I've been finding uh, for quick tasks using Excel is pretty great so we'll just start an example that creates this plot So the idea here is you're starting with this set of data that's just a stock price I picked. So in this case, it's Amazon stock. So you have the date, you have high, low, open, close. And let's say in this case, we want to plot the date and the close. So we'll just exit that. And then this is the output we're going to make. So we're going to delete it. I'm going to delete all this code here. And we'll start with the packages we need, which is NumPy. We need pandas for data frames in this case. And most importantly, we're going to use the XLS X writer uh, package, which is for writing to Excel. All right, so the first thing we have to do is to get our data into Python here. So we want our Amazon stock data to be a data frame from an Excel file. So we'll say read Excel. It was a uh, Stock prices. And in this case, I have to actually specify the sheet because I only want to use one for this example. So, like that. We'll just uh, print. The header of this data frame to make sure we loaded it correctly here. Yep, so there's our date, high, low, close, volume. Okay, so get our input data. We get that. Now we want to initialize the Excel output file. So with this package, um, it can't actually open and write to the same Excel file that you're working with. Um, there's other packages that can, so in this case we actually have to specify um, another file. And we're going to call it in our current directory output stock prices chart. And so we have to define a workbook using our SLX writer class. And we'll say, and we have to add a worksheet to this workbook that we just made with the add worksheet function. And then this is a bit, uh, bit of extra work here, but we actually, for simplicity, we're going to copy over 
everything in here uh, to our output. And there's different ways to do that, but for here we'll just do it uh, manually. So we're going to actually iterate through every column and just rewrite the data into our output sheet. We're going to go through all the column names, for example. So we're going to write uh, in the first row, we want the column name that we're iterating through right now. So again, some extra work, but for the very first column, um, or the very, yeah, for, so for the very first column, there's this issue where um, it's in the date format. So we actually need to initialize the date format in this case. With this, which you can find in the, the documentation for this package. So I'm going to go through every column for the first row. I'm going to rewrite our column name. And then I'm also going to uh, just write all the data. So so it's going to start at the first row because we used the zero row to write the, the header name. And column I that we're iterating through and we can just now call the data frame that we have at the call name that we're going through. But there's that one case that for the very first column it's in a date format so we actually have to say if i uh, equals one then I'm going to write it in the date format as a third argument for this right column function. Oh, and it's i equals zero, it's zero index python else we'll just keep the default format, we don't have to specify a format. And with that, we'll just run it real quick to see if it's doing what we want it to do. So you'll see we have this output that we made now. That's just literally a carbon copy of the input. And, uh, and there is ways to just, in one command, like copy over each sheet, but not what we're doing today. Okay, so now we've, we've created our output sheet that we want to actually uh, put all our charts in, analysis in. So again, referring to the documentation of this class, we can add a chart to the workbook. Add chart want to specify the type, we're going to say, because it can be a column, it can be XY scatter, in this case, we want the type to be scatter, and we can specify a subtype if we want, in this case, we want straight lines. So that's referring to um, you know this option where you can have just dots or 
uh, markers with lines or straight lines. So we selected this one in this case. Okay, so the way we add a series is we say chart add series. And then again, we're adding like a list of uh, dictionary items to specify what's going on. Categories is our x axis. And we can start with using the actual Excel notation. So in this case, we'll start with just, we know it ends at uh, the last row here, 755. So I'm just gonna write it in there for now. So we're going from row two to row 755. We want the date, which is the very first column as our X axis. And for the Y axis, we want the closing price which in this case is column E. And we should give it a, give it a name, let's say US dollars close. Again, we'll run that. Oh, I forgot. Uh, you're supposed to specify the worksheet to add the chart. So we're going to say Amazon worksheet. We want to add a chart. Um, what location do we want it in? Let's say uh, column B, row 10. chart it's not add it's insert so I will run that check on our output here so there's a chart And then just to generalize it a bit or to add some features, let's say we want to just mark where the maximum is. So we can use our favorite Python way to do that. So we can say peak growth price. So we want the index of the close price. So we're going to add another series. But this time, its x value is just going to be um, one location. So we can stop the string here and then add the row that we know it exists now using the zero based index we just found. So get the date at this row number by converting this to a string. And then we can do the same thing 
for the value. Just change it to column E like you would in Excel. And we're going to say pick price. In this case, we want it to uh, add a marker. So we say, again, referring to the documentation for the package, we can see that there's a marker option. So we want to define a marker. So its type is going to be a circle. So we'll close this so it lets us save a new one. Run again. It's complaining about something. We just didn't, uh, this is actually case sensitive, so I should have specified close with a capital C. So we'll check on our output here. And yeah, there we go. We have a nice little circle. So now if someone's looking at this, they can see where we got the data from. And then from there, you can uh, do some neat things like add some automation. So in this case, how about um, we'll get rid of this peak price finding. And how about for every column? We'll add a chart. So we'll say. So right now it's already skipping the date for us, which is nice. And then we want a way to convert. So now. Notice we need to do an x axis and a y axis, so we say chart. can also set like the minimum and maximum limits here so you can say let's make the minimum of the closing date 0 and the maximum uh, 1.2 times peak close brackets And there we go. 